But as you go about your daily duties and, and waging legal challenges to make sure that you're using the law to keep your community safe. Try to move people somewhere else because they know it's all over the media. Yeah. yeah. Making a cup of tea. Well, I was back in town for two days. I took all my camera gear out of the truck. I loaded up my construction tools. That whole process takes me about an hour and a half, two hours. Worked on my remodel house for two days. And today I got a phone call to go shoot some uh, network news, package assignments and live shots. About three and a half hours south of me down at the US-Mexico border. So I'm in the process of packing the truck up to do live shots, get the little generator, Gemini's, probably run a silk overhead. And, um, oh, I'm gonna put a tarp on too, so I can throw a blue tarp on top of the silk, because we may have some weather this week. I'm gonna be down there for four days doing morning and evening news live shots. And midday, I'll be shooting, um, what am I doing midday? Oh, shooting packages recorded. So it should, it should be a fun gig. It's kind of cracking up here. I'm going to use my 17 to 120 uh, because the 28 to 135 isn't quite wide enough in Super 35 mode, which I need to shoot for this show because of the I have to run the camera in 1080i mode for broadcast. And uh, yeah, so I need wider, tighter. So it's funny. I've had this camera since December. No, I got this in January 2020, FX9. And this is the first time I've installed my 17 to 120 on it in, um, it's January, 2022. It took me two years to mate the two things together. So funny when I throw that lens on there, it feels just like the Amura. I think it's the same length. It might be just a, maybe that much shorter. But gosh, I don't know. It looks the same on the tripod. And I'm realizing now I really need to order a, a proper VCT 14 shoulder pad with the touch and go so I can run, um, run my news style plate. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Just looking at Nick picked up an FX9 and he got, I think it's a Movecam shoulder pad for his camera that mounts on a VCT style. And yeah, I'm going to follow his steps. That, that one, I think it's Movecam. It's pretty cool. You can switch it out, the base plate on it, so it can either be a bridge to run on cinema style dovetail or VCT, all with the same shoulder pads, just a couple of screws to swap it out. I got my Zeeman Star out, just did a back focus check on this zoom. It's held perfect on the, all the cameras I've mounted it up on over the years. I've never actually messed with the back focus on this lens, but in this case, it is out. And I suspect the source of my problem is this uh, Sony, e-mount to PL adapter that I purchased on Amazon. Minor back focus adjustment, and now it's holding great. I'm in magnify mode here, 3X. Very happy, I'm not gonna run rods. Feels pretty solid, or feels solid, not pretty solid, it is solid. The weight's a little forward. I may actually run a dual battery mode if I'm doing a bunch of shoulder work. Even though it's heavier, it's gonna balance better with my shoulder sitting right here. But uh, boy, this lens feels great on this camera. I much prefer this over the the Sony pistol grip on the right hand side. That thing I find it's the same thing, like even with the kit zoom on there, which is quite a bit lighter weight, my arm cramps up and it's uh, the rig is too front heavy, lens side heavy. Well, good morning. McAllen, Texas, scheduled to go for a flight with the Texas Department of Public Service this morning and overfly the international border but that is not helicopter weather helicopter ride was a bust we missed the window with weather we just found out it took several hours to hear back that they uh, flew above the ceiling, I guess, and weren't comfortable to land because of the fog. It's understandable. 
I don't want to be up there if it's not 100% visual conditions. So, we may be done for the next four hours. We're going to do a live shot, evening news. And we're thinking location. We'll do it down here on the dock. It's the best spot here on the river. Oh yeah, this is great. You've seen this location before in uh, my previous video. It's down here on the border. All right, let this be a lesson to those that haven't made this mistake and like me continue to repeat it. When I wrapped my truck up in Dallas, I had been on the road for two weeks. I was tired, hungry. That was my last gig in the calendar for a week. So uh, loading out of that construction area, I put all my audio items as a lav mic, road pack, transmitter receiver, and my headphones. And I put them in the teleprompter case because I didn't have a safe place to put them. And I was like, I'll just, when I get down to the truck, I'll remove those items from my prompter case and put it back in the audio drawer. And guess what didn't happen? And then we're doing some live shots this evening, live to the network. And in that case, I'm gonna go over the old Sony standby. I've had these for over 20 years, the uh, ECM-77B. I tell you, all the way, I remember using these going all the way back to the early 90s when I was still in high school. Well, got another 90 minutes to stand by. So, making myself a cup of tea. Tell you, it is an impressive operation down here. All these different agencies doing their thing. It's a shift change right now for the game warden. Now it'll be something, right? Right. They're going to try to move people somewhere else because they know it's all over the media. Yeah. So, I'll try to get out there. Look at this. I didn't realize the DPS patrol boats, they've got to sit in metal boxes. That's crazy. Yes. Well, the wind has picked up, so we switched to the shotgun mic. It's getting a little bit of wind noise on the lavalier. I don't know why it didn't occur to me to just run the shotgun from the start, but the uh, producer is one step ahead of me. But that's because he does this every day, five days a week. And turning now to the crisis at our southern border, as we have been reporting, migrant crossings have skyrocketed over the past year right now at about 2 million. And right now, crossings already up nearly 140 percent from this time last year. As part of our commitment to covering this important issue, we welcome our new correspondent, Robert Sherman. He is News Nation's border reporter, the only reporter exclusively covering the border full time for a cable news network. So what? Robert, we welcome you. And you had a firsthand look today at the human impact of this ongoing crisis. We did, Nicole. This week marks our first time really getting our feet on the ground here. You can already see so many of the challenges that these communities are facing, be it the humanitarians who are working to try and care for those who have made the long, treacherous journey here, to law enforcement who's been working tirelessly to protect our nation's southern border. Sounds and sights seen at the U.S.-Mexico border daily. Babies crying, small children embracing, as Border Patrol agents process a group of migrants for crossing illegally. Fourteen alone in this encounter. Two telling News Nation they came all the way from El Salvador. They're human beings just like you and me. Sister Norma Pimentel runs a shelter in the Rio Grande Valley, which cares for hundreds of migrant families at a time. Many have traveled thousands of miles to get here, desperately needing food and shelter. Meanwhile, Texas DPS says forces in the field are running rampant, trying to keep up with all the crossings, despite new assets joining the effort. 
both on land and water. This past weekend, a busy one, with 420 encounters in the Rio Grande Valley sector alone. The flow of illegal drugs, also the chief concern, with fentanyl seizures up 134% last fiscal year. This week alone, nearly half a million dollars worth of marijuana seized in the Rio Grande Valley. Pimentel, however, sees the drugs and crime as a separate crisis. Here, she sees people desperate for a new life, like this girl who made the trek with her family from Honduras. Her American dream? To one day serve in the United States military. It's a totally different group of people that are entering asking for help, for safety, for protection. So lots to unpack there, Nicole, but this week the Biden administration is making the border a bit more of a priority. We know that Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas will be traveling to Arizona and Texas. Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Honduras later this week. In terms of if any tangible change will be coming out of these visits, that still remains to be seen. Nicole? Yeah, a little harder to measure there. Great reporting, Robert, and welcome to News Nation. Oh, uh, yeah. 4.30 a.m., 15-minute drive to location for morning news live shots. It's a quiet night here at the hotel, filled with law enforcement. I feel like we're the only ones here without a badge. All right, we are set up, waiting for our first slot of the morning, making a cup of tea. This is not the international border but it's a floodplain here, so we're, I don't know how far in, I have to look on a map, but the Rio Grande is quite a bit, I can't see it. Uh, so it's further than what I can see in the low light levels. New immigrants crossing at the southern border, which in 2022, I have seen an 140% increase compared to the same time last year, which was also record breaking. Border Patrol agents are using various methods to try and stem the flow of people crossing into the U.S. Now, as part of our commitment to covering this issue, we welcome our border correspondent, Robert Sherman. He's new to the Morning in America family and News Nation family, so we want to say welcome. And I know that you're the only reporter exclusively covering the border full time for a cable news network. So thank you so much. I visited McAllen, Texas myself and, and spoken to some of the people that you are actually uh, giving us another introduction to today. So thank you again uh, for the hard work you're doing. Can you give us the latest impact of the situation at the border now? Well, Adrian, as you are well aware, this area of McAllen and the Rio Grande Valley, it's still the epicenter of the border crisis. Actually, just right down the road here, this is where we saw a group of migrants being taken into custody by Border Patrol just the other day. Law enforcement tells us that they're constantly busy here putting new and new resources into the field, but they contend that they're dealing with not one, but two separate crises. The Rio Grande Valley hums with activity as law enforcement hustles to keep up with the flow of migrants coming across the southern border. More than two million migrant encounters tallied in 2021 by Customs and Border Protection, a record. It's a constant, constant surge every day. Uh, there's activity throughout the southern border, not just in the Rio Grande Valley. Of course, the Rio Grande Valley is the epicenter for this border crisis. Lieutenant Chris Oliveras with Texas DPS says the state continues to put more resources into the field to keep up. That's including over two dozen manned boats from Texas Parks and Wildlife. Back on land, children and families largely make up this group of 14 migrants from El Salvador who were processed by Border Patrol agents in McAllen. Some are ultimately taken by bus to nearby staging areas. But to law enforcement, the migrant aspect is only half of the equation. We got to shift the focus from the humanitarian effort that we saw, of course, you know, back in 2021. And we're still seated today with the families and unaccompanied children, but we need to focus on the criminal activity. Which Oliveras says is skyrocketing. Human smuggling busts are a common occurrence along the border, like these three, found in the trunk of a car near Narias, Texas, last week. Drugs are also of chief concern, with two seizures netting over $6 million worth of narcotics at the Brownsville, Texas, port of entry this week. 
So there's a lot to unpack there, Adrian, but the border is coming back into the national spotlight once again this week. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas begins touring parts of Arizona and Texas today, and Vice President Kamala Harris is slated to be in Honduras tomorrow. And good morning to you too, Adrian. And we just took a drive down the border wall here for a couple of miles, and it is just saturated with activity here. You can go just maybe a quarter of a mile at a time before running into one or two Border Patrol cruisers. Texas DPS tells us that they're constantly putting new resources in the field here, particularly in the Rio Grande Valley. But the surge that they're seeing on the ground here remains unprecedented. News Nation was able to catch this migrant encounter on cam maybe 30 minutes ago, just a half mile down the road from where we are. And I want you to keep in mind for a second that the border wall that's behind us, it's tall, it's over 20 feet in height. But there are certain sections of the wall which are much shorter. And as the sun was starting to rise, nine single men hopped the fence, made a run for it before they were tracked down by Border Patrol. But this just goes to show how constant these illegal crossings are here on the border. Oh, I saw some, oh, National Guard. Yeah, I saw some guardsmen with rifles back there. Here's a good example. I thought maybe this section, I think it is, there's a crane right here. So, work stoppage. There's some iconic small town Texas. Got the library and city hall. It's a little bit later, 5 a.m. Got a 6 a.m. morning news hit, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Then we're gonna go shoot a package midday with a rancher. Hopefully we get some nice B-roll, uh, moving some cattle around. And then we've got evening news hits, two, maybe three hour blocks. So it's gonna be a long one today. We are 10 minutes out from our 6 a.m. hit. Good morning, Adrian. And it's a case of trading places as the vice president heads to Honduras. Families and uh, individuals from Central and South America arrive here at the border every day. And as you mentioned, some are seeking asylum, others committing crimes. We're seeing drug trafficking, we're seeing human smuggling. Regardless, all it takes is a quick drive around to recognize that this whole area is inundated with activity. So you thought you were moving to yeah, a quiet community. Yeah, a little bit. Jesus Martinez thought he found a nice, quiet neighborhood in La Jolla, Texas right near the U.S.-Mexico border. It's been anything but. He and his girlfriend took these home videos. Choppers buzzing overhead, border patrol combing through their neighborhood, drivers slamming on the brakes to pick up migrants. So they just come in, they load up, they turn around, and they just head back right out. Yeah. So, I mean, that's 100 feet from your house. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, 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 it happens like so often that it's just, you know, we just don't really pay attention anymore. <laughs> It's not just La Jolla. The whole Rio Grande Valley has been busy, like this car chase last night where News Nation got an exclusive look inside a human smuggler's van where officials say 12 migrants were hiding. This week, the Biden administration is putting the border in the spotlight as Vice President Kamala Harris attended the inauguration of the new Honduran president in hopes of brokering a partnership in the region. The strategy is simple. If the economic situations improve for Central and South Americans, fewer will head to the U.S. Somebody has to hold the president accountable for his abandonment of the rule of law in this country. Texas Governor Greg Abbott, however, contends the real problem is that the federal government is not enforcing immigration laws strictly enough to discourage illegal crossings, namely deportations. ICE, in a statement to News Nation, says they, quote, focus its civil immigration enforcement priorities on the apprehension and removal of non-citizens who pose a threat to national security, public safety, and border security, but add that they take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But for people like Martinez, he thinks more resources and patrols would help him feel at ease. They do patrol, but not as often. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, that's where they take advantage of the situation. 
And it's worth noting that Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton told us earlier today that both ICE and Customs and Border Protection were supposed to partake in a roundtable with 11 attorney generals from across the country and Governor Greg Abbott today. Both of those organizations pulled out last night, according to Paxton, which he says just shows the furthering divide between the federal level and the states on this issue. Nicole? Uh, I didn't want to be all obnoxious in the lobby. Sitting there watching YouTube videos, killing time, and the Texas Attorney General rolls up. He's in the lobby right now, big security detail. And we're headed over to shoot a governor press conference with Governor Abbott. As you go about your daily duties and, and waging legal challenges to make sure that you're using the law to keep your community safe and keep your communities better, it is astonishing that one lawbreaker that we are having to wage legal action against is the President of the United States. There are laws passed by the United States Congress. There you go. The glamour continues. Getting set up for our 4 p.m. block. Live news. Just had another large apprehension. It looked like about 20 migrants lined up on the fence. They just loaded them into the, the bus. We were camped out here for, about, eh, I want to say four hours this morning, doing live shots on the hour. And uh, it was just a steady flurry of activity. A bunch of people hop over the berm here and sprint for the public road down this way. And border patrols on it. They swarm in from every direction in their patrol vehicles. And we were right in the middle of uh, one of them. They were, I was parked. Our live shots this morning we did from this corner of this parking lot and I was parked in here and they were circling around us here in the road and then in the parking lot. They nabbed a couple people right over there in the grass. Uh, separate instance, maybe an hour later, and they all made it up to where that black trailer is parked in the street. Set up for our final live shot of the evening. I'm on a public sidewalk, parked the van, see it over there under the duty free store. This is the last turnout before crossing the International Bridge. So I walked this and double checked it. I didn't want to screw that up and find myself no longer in the US. So I'm just camped out here. I got about another 20 minutes till we do our signal test. TV is up and in Chicago, they already enabled it. So they are seeing signal on their end. You see here, we got, yeah, delay one second. We're pushing about five megabits. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six modems here is pretty hard to put into words let's show you here's some video that we actually just shot just two hours ago this is a large group of migrants totaling 42 according to border patrol about a this is my morning no i didn't spend the night in the van 5 30 a.m i've been here for 30 minutes setting up for live shots 6 a.m 7 a.m 8 a.m i think we're on the seven minutes into the hour each block um it is rainy and super windy so i got a reflector overhead two stand sandbag it's been up for about 10 minutes and it hasn't blown over i'm kind of doing the test now 
we got about another 40 minutes till we go. I'm gonna have two newer lights on those stands. Those are gonna be out in the weather. So this will be a test on those too to see if they can handle the, the rain. And then I've got the camera shooting through the side door. The wind is originating in this direction, so I'm not getting water into the lens, fortunately. That worked out.